starts right now. And that is DeMar Hamlin. Is the one who was in on that stop on T. Higgins. This morning, Buffalo Bills defensive back DeMar Hamlin is in critical condition after the team says he suffered cardiac arrest on the field during Monday night football last night. What NFL is saying about the situation this morning coming up. Outside with live cam. If you step outside right now, it is breezier. Uh, Mike said a front has moved through. How much cooler do we get? We'll talk to him in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is January 3rd, back to work, back to school for some. We're going to talk to Stephen in a moment about a bad situation on the interstate up near Bernie. But first. Yes, but first, Happy New Year. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see what we can expect today. Yeah, that, that front move through right on schedule did produce some storms way out to the east, as expected. And now the humidity, I mean, whole different story than yesterday morning. So it's yes. pretty comfortable out there and still have a couple of clouds. Are we seeing the setting moon out there? We are seeing the setting moon out huh? there. Yeah, I mean, obviously not complete cloud cover and there is the moon and as you can see it is almost full it's going to be full on friday but boy what a glorious glorious picture we're going to have some clouds hanging around here this morning and then again things will start to clear out even more later on this afternoon 66 here in town but we've got 48 in kerrville 55 comfort and 59 bernie stage will continue to drop down a few more degrees we've got this bone dry air out there these numbers dew points yesterday were well up into the 60s you could definitely feel the humidity of course humidity started to work its way back here throughout the afternoon on Sunday, but uh, yeah, whole different story, and it's going to stay really nice throughout the next couple of days. Now, Mountain Cedar did drop down, but still, it is on the high side. Previous reading was 12, almost 13,000. Uh, yeah, we're definitely in the throes of the season, and got the school bus fired up again, so 57 degrees, like I said, will continue to drop down here in town. Low humidity, really, really nice. Light jacket, won't need it this afternoon. 75, mostly sunny skies. Not quite down to where we should be be the next couple of days. No complaints really. And then we do have a chance at some rain and another little more potent front coming in here late this weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, you said a rolled over. Yeah, big, prob big problems over here, Mike. As we get a look, I-10 at Bernie. Uh, let's go ahead and get a wider look now from Trans Guide. You can see a little bit of a shaky shot there, but uh, unfortunately we're also catching those flashing lights. Now, this is not the best picture out there, but I did get an alert from our friends over at Trans Guide. This does appear to be an 18 wheeler that has rolled over along I-10 eastbound as you're traveling out from Bernie, perhaps maybe to State Highway 46. You'll see these flashing lights right out over there. So uh, right now what we can expect is that traffic is actually being exited or should be diverted uh, to the exit there along the frontage road at mile marker, mile marker, pardon me, 537. And this is why we are seeing a buildup this early in the morning along those eastbound lanes. And as I mentioned, uh, this early in the morning, anytime an incident does pop up, it's not really going to be a big issue with congestion, but just take a look at that. That will likely be as we start to see the morning progress if that scene is still active uh, back here in town, things aren't really too much of a worry. It's going to be that rollover incident that we just showed you on trans guide, and that's why we're seeing a drive time uh, really kind of pick up there. This isn't the one I was trying to show you guys, but while we're at it, let's just take a quick look at these drive times everywhere here. It looks pretty normal, but we can expect that drive time coming in from I 10 Bernie will be a little bit longer than expected, especially to the downtown area. Let's get you back here again. This rollover incident along I 10 eastbound right there. Mile marker 30. 537 is going to be the big incident of the morning so far. We'll keep a close eye on things and have those updates right throughout the morning, guys. Stephen, thank you. Now to that stunning situation that played out on live TV last night during Monday Night Football. Members of the Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati Bengals visibly upset after Bills defensive tackle DeMar Hamlin was critically injured while making a tackle. After a long delay, the NFL postponed the game and Hamlin was rushed to a Cincinnati hospital. This morning, ABC's Lionel Moyes gives us an update from the Buffalo Bills team and the NFL. This morning, prayers for DeMar Hamlin. We will all be doing a lot of that. The 24-year-old Bill's safety collapsing on the field in the first quarter after a tackle. The team releasing a statement overnight saying Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest following a hit in our game versus the Bengals. His heartbeat was restored on the field, adding that Hamlin is currently sedated and listed in critical condition. We have decided not to show the play, but a Bengals player rammed into Hamlin at full speed, appearing to hit him in the head and chest. Hamlin quickly stood up, took two steps, and then collapsed. Players were visibly distraught, some crying, others having to look away as medics performed CPR for several minutes before rushing him away in an ambulance to UC Medical Center in critical condition. 
TPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation is the action of pushing on the chest in a rhythmic fashion to generate blood flow. And it's only done for one thing and one thing alone, which is cardiac arrest. A show of unity as players formed a prayer circle around Hamlin as medics worked and now questions as to what led to the collapse. Right now, it's impossible to tell. Um, there are types of sudden cardiac arrest caused by arrhythmias uh, that could happen after a hit, but they could also happen to someone sitting on the sidelines. Um, there's other types of cardiac arrest that occur after blunt force trauma to the chest. The Bills posting a montage of well wishes for Hamlin. Fans have also been donating to a fundraising site that Hamlin recently posted to raise money for a toy drive. Third annual toy drive, man. We're doing it for the kids. Having a good time, man. So let's get back to it. That site had a $2,500 goal. It quickly topped millions of dollars overnight. No word yet on when that game will be rescheduled. Some of his teammates were seen overnight arriving at the hospital, but you could feel it watching the game live and even seeing reaction from fans and players. The top concern for everyone over everything, Hamlin's safety. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. The new Congress opens today with House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy grasping for political survival. McCarthy could become the first nominee for speaker in 100 years to fail to win support from his own colleagues in the first round of voting. The noontime showdown could very well devolve into a prolonged floor fight. Some Republicans worry about a spectacle that divides the party where they'd rather be focused on their priorities, including investigating President Joe Biden's administration. 45 years after Pelé played his last game, it will be hard for many to imagine modern soccer without him. The soccer great who died last week will be buried today in the city of Santos where he grew up. A Catholic mass will be celebrated before Pelé's casket is ushered through the streets of Santos to a cemetery. Brazil's newly inaugurated president is expected to be there shortly before the coffin is removed from the stadium. A steady stream of tens of thousands of people have filed into St. Peter's Basilica today to pay respects to former Pope Benedict the 16th. His body lying in state ahead of his funeral this week. Benedict becomes the first pope in 600 years to resign. Security has been tight with visitors going through several checkpoints before entering the basilica itself. Many stopped to pray after viewing the body or staying to attend mass in side chapels. Vatican Police said 65,000 people had filed past on the first day. Right now, 437, 65 degrees. An Army major accused of killing his wife and the death of a San Antonio firefighter and the death of a cheerleader. These are all on the docket for the Bear County Court System in 2023. We're going to break down the biggest cases coming up. Can the Dallas Cowboys win the NFC East and survive the playoffs? What has to happen, especially for Dak, if the team's going to continue to succeed this year? And let's look out there with live cam. A little cooler this morning at 65 degrees. A nice little breeze when you step outside. We'll be right back. Just about 441, the Spurs kicked off a two-game road trip with a, in the Big Apple last night with a game against the surging Nets. Devin Vassell was back in the lineup after missing two games with left knee soreness first quarter. Jakob finds Jeremy Sohan cutting to the basket for a layup. Count it plus the foul. Plus he hit a free throw to make it an 8-7 game. Brooklyn, Brooklyn responds with a 7-0 run. Kevin Durant nails a jumper through contact. Three-point play makes it 15-7 Brooklyn. Vassell tries to keep it close with a three ball, but San Antonio trails 37-25 after one. The Nets pull away in the second. Off the miss, Kyrie gets up for the putback slam dunk. That gets the Brooklyn crowd to their feet. San Antonio never really makes a game of it after that. They fall 139-103. Ouch. Next, Spurs stay in New York, take on the Knicks. Tip offset for tomorrow, 6-30 at Madison Square Garden. Dallas Cowboys have a chance to win the NFC East on their last week of the regular season, but several things have to happen. First, Cowboys have to beat the Commanders in Washington, and they will need the Eagles, who are expecting Jalen Hurts to play this weekend, to lose to the Giants. That's not enough. Dak Prescott has to protect the ball better if the Cowboys are going to have much success in the postseason. In the win over the Titans last Thursday, Prescott threw two more interceptions in the 27-13 victory. Gives Prescott a career high of interceptions of 14. And remember, he missed five games with a fractured thumb. He picked up in the opener against Tampa Bay. His previous high came in 2017 with 13 picks. That was with nearly 500 pass attempts compared to just 357 this year.
It's frustrating, but there's nothing I can do about it in the same sense. So, I mean, yeah, it might be frustrating, but by the time that uh, I'd say a minute after I've sat down on the on the sideline, I've got it out of my head. Um, I've, I've said my words I needed to say to myself um, and, and just have moved on at that point. So, uh, yeah, it is frustrating, as I said, um, whether it's off your, off your guy's hands or whether I throw it behind the receiver and he makes the play um, and, the, and the cornerback makes the play, they're all frustrating and somehow or another they've got to stop. All right, so it's Cowboys at Commanders. Kickoff is Sunday at 325. Mississippi State with a heartfelt tribute to late head coach Mike Leach before the ReliaQuest Bowl game against Illinois. From a pregame flag and helmet decals to the Bulldogs found a way to win. Will Rogers ties the game at 10 with an eight-yard touchdown pass to Justin Robinson in the fourth. Massimo Biscardi kicks the go-ahead field goal with four seconds left. Mississippi State added a fumble return touchdown on the final play to win the game 19-10. And there was incredible drama in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Number 10 USC led number 16 Tulane 45-37 with four minutes left. Mario Williams fumbles the kickoff out of bounds at the one. Two plays later, Austin Jones tackled in the end zone. Yep, that's a safety. Green wave down 45-39. They get possession of the ball after converting multiple fourth downs. Pratt finds Alex Bauman for the diving grab in the end zone with nine seconds to go. It's ruled incomplete at first, but upon review, the USC defender helps keep the ball off the ground. The call is overturned to a touchdown, and Tulane stuns USC 46 to 45. College football remains exciting. Wow. At the end of 22 and into 23. Very close. Time now, 444 and 65 degrees for now. There are several big court cases on the docket for this year in Bear County, including the case of a six-year-old girl who was killed. We're going to tell you when. You can, and when they get when they begin coming up and an extradition hearing for the man charged in the murder of the four University of Idaho students up next house summer describing his recent behavior ahead of his arrest. A local man is accused of killing his wife and hiding her body. As we move further into the new year, KSET's court reporter Eric Hernandez gives us a look at several high profile cases we're expecting to see play out in court. Trials that we've been anticipating look to finally start in 2023. We first have to mention the Andre McDonald case. The trial was supposed to start in 2021, but delays have kept it from going. McDonald, an Army major in 2019, is accused of killing his wife, Andrine McDonald, and disposing of her body in North Bear County. As of right now, jury selection is set to begin January 17th. And right after the McDonald trial, the Iman Johnson trial is expected to begin in February. Johnson in 2017 is accused of setting fire to his gym that spread to an entire shopping center. The fire caused the death of SAFD firefighter Scott Deems and injured two others. Johnson is facing multiple charges in this case, including murder and arson. Next up, while no date is set yet, but the retrial for Mark Howerton could finally take place. Howerton is accused of the 2017 murder of Trinity University cheerleader Kaylee Mandotti. In 2019, Howerton's trial ended in a mistrial with a hung jury. His defense attorneys have tried to stop the retrial from happening, but a fourth court of appeals denied that request earlier this year. Also, a case to watch is that of Andrew Elizondo. If you remember, on Mother's Day in 2021, a six-year-old girl was killed as her mother drove away from a car club gathering. Elizondo was charged with the murder, and his next court date is the end of January. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over at the problems over there at I-10 at Bernie West still happening right now. This is on the eastbound lanes. We've got a big rig rollover, and we are expecting delays as the morning goes on until they can get this cleared out. But Stephen Cavazos is here early. He's going to be keeping an eye on for that for all of us. And we're getting a little cold off this morning. Yeah, I mean, we're not down to where we should be. You know, low 40s right now, coolest time of the year historically. But yeah, it feels a whole lot better with that lower humidity than yesterday. It's going to be fantastic the next couple of days. So get outside and enjoy it. Great way to get, head back to work for a lot of folks and head back to school. And this is what it looked like yesterday off to these. We had that front move on through and actually late in the day started seeing some of those clouds develop, especially off to the east. And there were a few thunderstorms and way up to the northeast as well. And uh, yeah, kind of ominous looking clouds. And now we've got some of those leftover clouds right now. Not complete cloud cover, although we were seeing the moon earlier. I don't know if it has set yet or the clouds just moved in there, but we're going to see some uh, beautiful sunrises or sun sunsets today, not necessarily sun 
sunrise with some of these clouds hanging around here, but then the next couple of days is going to be absolutely gorgeous. Here's what's left over as far as the rain is concerned and some of those thunderstorms moving well off to the east. This is along that front and then in behind it, of course, it pulled in the drier air. We're still at 66 and the wind does tend to keep uh, the atmosphere kind of churned up a little bit, so it doesn't allow the coldest air to settle down here to the surface, but we'll still continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. We've got this bone dry air, of course, and the wind is out of the northwest at about 10, 15 miles per hour as of right now. The dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere yesterday, they were up in the mid 60s, so we are more than half or less than half of what we were yesterday. We dropped down about 35 degrees here in town, approximately 36 in U Valley, the much, much drier air, and that will, like I said, remain in place for the next couple of days. So uh, going for 57 later on this morning with some of that cooler air. We'll still have a lot of clouds hanging around here and then more sunshine as the morning rolls on in toward noon. Make it up to 69 at noon. They're going to be topping off later on today at 75. So we'll still be 10, 15 degrees above normal, but that will start to change over the next couple of days. Now, the next few days, we will continue to dry out a little bit more and then the humidity really surges back in here, especially later in the day on Friday going into Saturday. Then notice how it drops off on Sunday. So we have another front that's going to be moving through here. That's going to be Saturday night into Sunday and that one's also going to touch off a couple of showers around here and definitely cool us off. So we do peak on Friday at 76 and then Sunday only 59 degrees for a high temperature and will be closer to normal readings going into the first part of next week and those low temperatures. Notice how Saturday is very, very warm with all that humidity, but then we do drop off by the first part of next week. So the forecast today, just a beautiful, beautiful day. Got some clouds hanging around here this morning, then more sunshine by noon, 69 degrees. Then we will top off later on at 75, mostly sunny skies. Tomorrow is going to be even a little bit cooler, make it down into the mid 40s and about the same situation going into Thursday morning, so closer to normal temperatures, although the highs will still be in the low 70s. And then the humidity returns as we go into the weekend. A lot of clouds on Saturday and pretty humid around here. Then that front moves through and that'll knock temperatures back down briefly by Sunday. 59 degrees, couple of showers. Overall, looks pleasant. Yeah, next few days, really, really nice. Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. 452, 65 degrees. And let's look at your winning model numbers. We have pick 3389, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 8141, Fireball 7. Your cash five numbers 7, 18, 19, 29, 33, Texas two step 1, 3, 10, 11, with a bonus ball of 4. Mega tonight is $785 million. Powerball is 291 and there's a look at your Powerball numbers on this Tuesday morning. And welcome back, it's 455. The man charged in the murder of four University of Idaho students faces an extradition hearing today. ABC's Kana Whitworth has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a recent student of accused Idaho murder suspect Brian Koberger describing how the TA acted in the weeks leading up to his arrest. He was pretty distant. Um, he he answered a lot of questions with like, you know, sort of canned responses that he clearly had you know thought of before. And he he'd look at the ground when he was um, up at the front of class. Hayden Stinchfield speaking out, saying Koberger's demeanor changed around the time of the murders. I remember he looked a little bit more disheveled. He had like some stubble coming on and his hair was a little, you know, messed up or whatever. Uh, nothing like crazy, but enough that I remember seeing him and thinking like, oh man, you know, finals must be really getting to him or something like that. And coming up at 7 a.m., George Stephanopoulos talks live with the father of victim Kaylee Gonzalez. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kena Whitworth. ABC News. It's now th about three minutes till 565 degrees. The new Congress opens today in Washington. Just ahead, a look at how House Republicans are eager to confront President Biden's agenda. Need some help in the kitchen? How Samsung's new smart oven can help you with your next meal. Very nice. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the new year has money on many people's minds. And when it comes to grocery shopping, Prices will likely keep going up. How you can save money on your next trip to the store. Our alert on the roads this morning is coming in from Bernie on I-10. It's shaky because of that cold front, but we've got a big rig overturn. It's affecting main lanes. Stephen will have more details coming up.
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A car crashes into a man trying to cross the access or access road of I-35 overnight. We have an update on the man's condition. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. A new Congress is set to start today, but Representative Kevin McCarthy's bid for the next Speaker of the House remains in peril. The details coming up. And let's look out there with a live cam, a nice cool 65 degrees and a little breezy out there. It is. Mike says a little front came through. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. That would be January 3rd. Mm -hmm. Not many of us write checks anymore, but it is 2023. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll it'll come up when you're oh, going to yeah. accidentally put 2022. But it yeah. may be in a week, it may be in a month, but it will happen. Yes, it will. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike about the nice little cold front we got. Yeah, because it was very humid yesterday, and that moved through. The front did right on schedule. Did produce a few showers and thunderstorms well off to the east, and now the drier air is in here, and it's much more comfortable. We're not down quite down to where we should be. As a matter of fact, we're still at 66 degrees thanks to the cloud cover around there and a little bit of that breeze. But look at that bottom number. The dew point is at 27, much, much lower, 35, almost 40 degrees lower than what it was yesterday. So that much drier air out there. We are going to make it up to 75 later on today, so we will still be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And as far as the allergens are concerned, mountain cedar, which was sky high a couple of days ago, approaching 13 thousand just about in half. First of all, I jumped ahead of myself there. The aquifer dropped down two tenths of a foot yesterday. Now mountain cedar still on the high side, but a little bit uh, almost half of what it was previous day. And of course, the updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning. As far as the wind we we're talking about out of the uh, northwest at 10 close to 15 miles per hour. Got a couple of gusts out there at times and uh, it's not going to be overly breezy today. But yeah, this uh, northerly wind is pulling in obviously that drier air around here. So like we're talking about, the front is through much, much less humid out there. And then mostly sunny later on this afternoon. It is going to be on the warm side up into the mid 70s. Normal high this time of year is 63 degrees. So well above that midweek. So tomorrow and Thursday sunshine, very pleasant cool mornings and nice afternoons. Then we go into the weekend. Humidity starts to return on Friday. It's really going to surge back in here throughout the day. Late Friday into Saturday. We'll have a lot of clouds hanging around here on Saturday. Then another front's going to move through and that's going to cool us down by Sunday. Also give us a chance for some showers around here. By the way, we did pick up a whopping one one hundredth of an inch of rain officially here in town yesterday. So something to start off the year as far as rain is concerned. Details on the forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, got some big problems out there, right? Yeah, Mike, uh, we are starting Tuesday off with some of these issues here along I-10 over uh, in Bernie. Let's get a wider look at TransGuide. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear much has changed. We noticed that the camera was a little bit shaky, but what's pretty clear out there are those flashing lights. We're looking at an 18-wheeler that rolled over in the early hours of this morning. Uh, unfortunately, we are still not sure exactly the extent of the injuries of the driver, but we're hoping everyone's okay out there. We'll work to gather those details for you and give you those updates right here on GMSA. But for now, let's get you updated on the traffic situation because you can see that things uh, are actually moving okay here on the frontage road. That's because vehicles are being directed off to exit exit uh, FM or pardon me, mile marker 537 where that crash has been reported. And now what we are also seeing is a buildup that is slowly taking place along those eastbound lanes of I-10. So an area you either want to avoid or just make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to travel through because it doesn't look like anyone is moving uh, by far uh, without any uh, big trouble, but you will see some delays out there. I'm working to comb through some solutions for you as well, but let's get you back here in town. Things aren't looking too bad. You can see there's a ton of green out there, so for now things are quiet in the metropolitan area, but let's look at those travel times because we will start to see more of this. 26 minutes from that journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound, so that's a little bit more than what we typically would see on an ordinary morning. Uh, so again, expect some big delays if you are traveling in that early. 20 if you are traveling on 281 southbound from Boulevardy and a 25 minute drive time on I-35 southbound from New Braunfels. But again, big headline on the roadways is going to be here along I-10 at Bernie. Mile marker 537, those eastbound lanes, we're probably going to see a little bit more red in the next few minutes. Mark Seff. Thank you, sir. This morning, San Antonio police say a man was hit by someone driving a car on the northeast side late last night. Happened around 1030 at the intersection of I-35 and Eisenhower. Police say a man in his 40s was crossing the access road when he was hit by a car. He was taken to the hospital with leg and head trauma. Police say the driver of the car stopped and tried to help. No charges have been filed. 
And happening today, the sentencing for ex Bear County Constable Michelle Badientes Vela continues. Vela was found guilty four months ago on two counts of tampering with government records. The sentencing is scheduled to begin later this morning at 10. We will be live streaming it on our website, KSAT.com, and on our KSAT YouTube channel. The trial is expected to wrap up this week. Vela faces anywhere from two years probation to 10 years in prison. Teachers at Uvalde CISD are gearing up for classes to resume after Christmas break following reports of an intruder on one of their campuses. The call Monday just before 3 p.m. Uvalde police and DPS troopers cleared Dalton Elementary and found no one was on campus aside from a teacher with the district. The report stated a man wearing all black carrying a backpack made it into the one of the classrooms. However, in a statement, the district said upon a review of the camera footage, the individual was walking outside the fence line and had left the property's perimeter before authorities arrived. The individual was not seen on camera footage on campus or entering a classroom, end quote. Though it turned out to be nothing, some are still concerned. We relive this over and over because of instances like this. You know, now it, it takes us right back to that day. And so it, it's extremely scary. Both the district and the Valley Police Chief encourage anyone who sees something suspicious to say something immediately. Well, it's the first day of the new Congress in Washington. You're looking live at Capitol Hill this morning, where it is now 6.06 .06 a.m. as Republicans are set to take control of the U.S. House. GOP leader Kevin McCarthy is still short of the votes he needs to clinch the speakership. As ABC's and Wynn reports, McCarthy has given ground to major demands from his conservative colleagues as he tries to win them over. This morning, a new Congress is set to convene with Republicans taking control of the House of Representatives. But there's still much uncertainty over the vote for Speaker. With only four Republicans to spare, GOP leader Kevin McCarthy of California is struggling to secure the votes he needs to clinch the gavel. Five conservative members already said outright they won't support him. And even as McCarthy makes some concessions, including making it easier to remove him from his post, nine others remain unconvinced, sources say. Representative Bob Good on Fox News. I, I suspect 10 to 15 members will vote against him. If McCarthy isn't initially elected, the quest for speaker could extend into multiple rounds of votes, something that hasn't happened in a century. Despite that, McCarthy appears confident his staffers spending the day moving his belongings into the speaker's office. Are you prepared to make more concessions in exchange for I hope you all have a very nice New Year's. Meanwhile, McCarthy will need a yes vote from George Santos, the congressman-elect from New York who faces new legal trouble after admitting to lying or embellishing details of his career, college, and Jewish ancestry. Prosecutors in Brazil say they are reopening a 2008 criminal case against Santos for allegedly paying for goods with a stolen check. The case was suspended until now because police could not find Santos. It's on top of multiple investigations against Santos here in the U.S. Despite scrutiny from both sides of the aisle, top G GOP leaders have largely remained silent and Santos has refused to step down. The vote for speaker is expected around noon today. The House won't be able to conduct any other business until the speaker is elected. M1, ABC News, Washington. And the time now is 5.08 and 66 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, Apple raising the prices of its battery replacement service for some iPhone models. We'll tell you which ones and by how much. And the new year means a fresh start for many. How asking a simple question could help you change the bad habits you want to get rid of. Outside with slide cam, might need a jacket again this morning after a very warm Monday afternoon. We're down to 66 degrees. It's much breezier. And Mike says the humidity is gone for now. We'll be right back. Ringing in the new year often means starting a new goal or resolution. One mental health expert says the key to keeping that resolution may be in one little word. Patty Santos tells us how asking why could help. It's a new year and a fresh start for San Antonio families with resolutions. Outside more and we started today since they got all the scooters and stuff for Christmas. For many, the goal is to live more intentionally in 2023. We set a goal as a family just to be more, um, have more experiences um, to do as a family instead of uh, less, instead of the screen time and being at home and watching TV, being on the iPads. A period of time in our lives. Mental health expert Tally Dolge says setting tangible goals is a great great way to keep them up. Sit down with yourself, write yourself a list, a list of things that you would like to do this year, but not something that you have to do. 
Those with resolutions that have to do with changing habits like getting fit or eating better might have to do a little digging. Asking why might be the key to sticking with that goal this time around. The thing that I have been doing wrong is continuing to set these expectations that fall short after a certain period of time because I didn't really look into the why. So if we don't have a why emotionally, there's no way our behaviors are going to be able to keep up with that. Adult reminds us that mental health, self-care looks different for everyone. And don't put so much pressure on a timeline. Instead, try a habit out as an experiment and don't be bummed if you have to start over. First of all, it's really about starting over, that you can start over any day. She says daily journaling the ups and downs of your goal might help that desired habit stick. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Steph, I was at Costco yesterday and mm -hmm. I saw, I st stood back for a minute, kind of watched people uh, walking past all the exercise equipment, uh -huh. the dumbbells and the benches yes. and the bikes, and, and they got a lot of looks. Yeah, I, I didn't see any takers, but I saw. <laughs> they were thinking about it. They were definitely yeah. thinking about it. Maybe they're asking Patty's question, why? Why, why? do I need this right. now? <laughs> Do I really want to do this? 514, 66 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you what's so special about LG's new 2023 O, oh, what was it, OU. It's a, what kind of screen is this? It's not OLED. Was it OLED? I've heard, I've heard both. Okay, I've heard OLED. OLED. OLED, okay, yes. I like OLED better, TV. And a first look at Samsung's new wall oven that can understand what you're cooking, Steph, and even offer suggestions, Steph. I would love that. <laughs> Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. At the end of a long day, it's the last thing I want to do. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one, so it's ready to go when I am. The cleaning solution actually breaks down dirt and grime. And the pad absorbs it deep inside, so it prevents streaks and haze better than my old mop. Plus, it's safe to use on all my floors, even wood. Swiffer WetJet, so worth it. Best decision ever. Love it for your money back. When it's go time, I don't let constipation stop me. New great tasting Dolkalax Chewy Fruit Bites work naturally with the water in your body in as little as 30 minutes. So you can go fast, go gently, and go on with life. New Dolkalax Chewy Fruit Bites put you comfortably in control. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit indeed.com slash hire. Welcome back. 518 on your Tuesday morning. Apple is raising prices again on one of its services. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, paying more for a new iPhone battery. Apple just announced plans to charge another $20 for its out-of-warranty battery service for all iPhone models. So the $69 service will go to $89. The new higher prices start in March. LG is rolling out a new line of TVs, promising to be up to 70% brighter. Some of the company's new models will feature a so-called per-pixel brightness booster, which LG says creates a much clearer picture during daytime viewing or in any well-lit room. And Samsung's updated smart oven is so smart, it can tell what you're cooking. The oven has a camera inside, detects what you're making, and will suggest optimal cooking settings. Other highlights include a warning notification to prevent you from burning your meal. That is always useful. And those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Very helpful. <laughs> Just saying. I love that. Yeah. Right. I love cooking. Well, I like having help. <laughs> All right. <laughs> From an oven. Yes. 519. All right. We're going to talk about that uh, cool yeah. front coming up. But uh, Stephen uh, takes the stage first this morning. Yeah. Big problems out there mm -hmm. along I-10 East. 18-wheeler uh, that rolled over earlier this morning. Uh, we are still seeing those flashing lights out there. And you can see that it's obviously been a very active scene throughout the morning. We're watching it closely. And unfortunately, it does look like there's a little bit more of a buildup. What I can tell you, this is along I-10 East as you approach mile marker 537 and you will see that traffic right there on that trans guide camera uh, traffic's actually being diverted to exit early so right now that was probably where we're going to see a little bit more buildup take place as well but what we have on our side is how early it is right now so we know a lot a lot of folks are out there but give it about an hour or so that will change pretty rapidly all right let's get you right there again i-10 eastbound at fm 537 is where that rollover took place we see the buildup taking place and we expect it to expand a little bit more as the morning does pick up uh, it does look like this is going to be a big problem for a while but as we get a wider look along i-10 and around the bernie area things are pretty fine and we get you back here in town 
again, quiet morning is how we're starting it back here in the metropolitan area. No major issues to report, at least for now, but we are keeping a close eye on the roadways back here in San Antonio, but it doesn't look like we're going to see anything that's going to hinder the commute, at least for now. Let's get you on rotation now. You can see here the roads have been pretty quiet, but uh, we are starting to see a little bit more traffic compared to the last few days because we know some kiddos may be returning to school and parents may be up early returning to work, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah, and if you're uh, heading out to work in school this morning, grab a light jacket, but boy, it's going to be fantastic. Got some clouds right now. This was the uh, sunset over there at uh, in Anderson, and boy, that was pretty. Sunsets are going to be fantastic. Sunrise this morning, well, we do have a lot of clouds hanging around here, but uh, the next couple of mornings should be fantastic. Uh, the moon rises as well later on this evening because we're approaching the uh, full moon phase, and so therefore, just as the sun is going down, Look off to the east. The sun's gonna, or the moon is gonna be coming up. So no problems. Yesterday, remember this picture was a little bit on the fuzzy side, looking over there by the uh, airport. But we don't have anything as far as any fog to deal with or reduce visibility because we've got such dry air. 66 in town, 63 Helotus, and then temperatures really drop off there in Kerrville, 46 as of right now, and 68 down the road at Stinson. Bone dry air in place. So we've got one of the ingredients to really let us cool off, and that's the dry air. But we've got the cloud cover hanging on in here, which acts like a bit of a blanket, and as well as the breeze, which is out of the northwest at about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. And that doesn't allow the heaviest, coldest air to settle down here to the surface. But I do think we will be dropping down a few more degrees this morning into the uh, upper 50s when it's all said and done. And we'll have mostly cloudy skies, then more sunshine as the morning rolls on. Things are going to warm up nicely to 69 at noon and make it up to 75 later on this afternoon with plenty of sunshine and clear skies tonight. So like I said, sunset tonight, the moonrise is going to be just fantastic. And as far as the dry air, it is going to stay in place. In other words, the humidity ain't going to be coming back anytime soon, at least for the next couple of days. But then once we go in toward the weekend, we are going to see more humidity, especially coming back in here Friday going into Saturday. Obviously, really, really cold air up to the north of us. We're getting not really a, a chunk of that. It's just because of the dry air that's going to allow temperatures to drop down, but we'll still stay on the, the warm side of things, especially compared to normal. Normals being 63 and 41 for the high and low, respectively, and we're not going to see those numbers anytime soon. So in other words, this coldest air is going to be staying up there to the, the north of us, but it will be more pleasant as we go into the next uh, couple of days, including today, including this morning. We have temperatures. We'll make it up to 69 at noon mostly sunny skies and again with that dry air out there it's just going to be fantastic 75 degrees although 10 to 15 degrees above the normal average high temperature tomorrow I'll make it down to 45 so closer to where we should be same thing Thursday morning low 70s both tomorrow as well as Thursday humidity returns on Friday and Saturday a lot of clouds around Saturday and then the next cold front moves on through here Saturday night into Sunday so we'll only be at 59 on Sunday and uh, an okay chance for a couple of showers around here on Sunday. That looks cold. I mean, compared to, you know, the week we're going to have as we're talking about Monday, 59 yeah. degrees. Yeah, 59 on Sunday is going to be chilly, plus with the cloud cover out there. So. All right, we'll prepare. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 523, 65 degrees. And how about a scary movie to start off 2023? Up next, actors talk about Megan's scary title character. Plus, SZA continues the rain and the new year. Okay, 526 now to the creepy scoop on a scary movie opening this weekend. Plus, we see who's booming on the Billboard charts here. CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. What are you doing? Couldn't sleep. Occupational hazard. Allison Williams from Get Out returns to horror movies with Megan, about an artificially intelligent android who rebels against her creator. The most creepy was like Megan off, in her off moments, was like so scary. Because even when you're working with her, there's the sense that she's very alive, but she seems like the potential of her aliveness is even more threatening when she's doing nothing at all. Megan, turn off. Are you sure? What's left of you? How am I supposed to tell you? I don't want to see you with anyone but me. 
SZA began 2023 the way she ended 2022, on top of the Billboard 200 album chart. Her set SOS topped the list for a third straight week, while five of the top ten were holiday albums, led by Michael Bublé's Christmas. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 65 degrees. The body of former Pope Benedict XVI is lying in state without any papal paraphernalia, but we can expect ahead of his funeral later this week. Plus, there are some big changes coming to the Tower Life building here in San Antonio, how the building's interior is getting a transformation. And ahead on GMSA at 6, most of us love New Year's fireworks, but a family in San Antonio isn't celebrating after a bullet fell through their roof from the sky. What they're saying now coming up. This morning, as we speak, a steady stream of tens of thousands are filing past St. Peter's Basilica or into St. Peter's Basilica to pay respects to former Pope Benedict XVI. We'll tell you more about how he'll be honored in a special service later this week. And let's look out there with live cam. We're starting cool and breezy, 65 degrees, and you know, this afternoon is looking pretty good too. Well, for some of us, it feels like a Monday, but it is Tuesday. It mm -hmm. is January 3rd, and we're going to talk to Stephen in just a moment. Yes, happy Tuesday and happy new year from us. We just came back, and I know you were back yesterday, right? Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it was a whole different story yesterday in comparing to uh, today. We had all that humidity out there. We had some of those showers and thunderstorms well off to the east last night as that front moved on through here. And now, after the front moved through, it's nice outside. We've got still some clouds hanging around here, so that's what's holding temperatures up somewhat. So we are at uh, 66 and that's still above the normal high temperature, which is 63 this time of year. But that bottom number there, the dew point has really, really dropped down. And thanks to those winds coming in here out of the north primarily, about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour on average around the area. 46 right now is the uh, the cold spot up there in Kerrville, 62 Balverde, 57 Bernie Stage, 64 at Port S.A. And Seguin right now is at 61 degrees. We'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches but again we've got that that blanket of clouds on top of us i think we'll make down into the mid excuse me upper 50s before it's all said and done and here's the wind which is out of the north primarily again 10 15 miles per hour it's not going to be overly windy today but just a, enough out there to where yeah light jacket's not a bad idea mountain cedar which dropped down almost half of what it was the previous day's reading. It's still on the high side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out. And with that northerly wind, it's going to be interesting to see if that mountain cedar count does kind of shoot back up. 69 today at noon, 75 for a high temperature. Plenty of sunshine out there. Definitely on the warm side. Again, 10, 15 degrees above normal, but an absolutely fantastic day with this low humidity. And it's going to stick around the next couple of days. Another front comes through here later on in the weekend, and it does bring some rain chances with it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority got that big problem out there northwest, right Steve? Yep, uh, Mike, unfortunately not a great way to start the morning for our friends up toward Bernie, but uh, let's first start here in town so you what we can expect because things are pretty quiet there along 281 at Hildebrand, but still uh, probably a little bit more busy than what we saw the last few mornings because we do know some folks are returning to work and uh, a lot of kiddos are going back to school today. So just remember we will see those school buses out there. Let's make sure to drive safe. Extra caution today. All right, let's go and get you to the map. So as I mentioned, the big story here in town is a whole lot of nothing, but we take you back up here to I-10. Those eastbound lanes of Bernie, we are still seeing a little bit of a buildup here that's been pretty steady actually throughout the morning, but I expect that to expand a little bit more if we still see the scene active. This is that rollover, 18-wheeler rollover, pardon me, near mile marker 537. So that is why we are seeing a little bit of a buildup there. We can tell you that traffic right now is being diverted to exit FM, or pardon me, mile marker 537. So you will see a lot more build up along the frontage roads as well. Travel times right now to the Alamo City aren't too bad if you're coming in from any of these communities. 27 minutes on I-37 uh, if you're traveling in the northbound lanes from Pleasanton this early. Usual drive time on US-90 eastbound with 30 minutes is what we can expect right now. And that arrival from Lytle on I-35 northbound looks to be about 16 minutes uh, right here to the Alamo City. But as I mentioned, things are fine there, but the big problem does remain back here in Bernie as we get you there to I-10 at Bernie. Uh, F, again, mile marker 537 is where that rollover has been picked up. You can see the flashing lights out there and some of the traffic that's being diverted to the frontage road. Again, we can probably expect to see a few more slowdowns taking place in the area, but we'll get you through it. Mark stuff. 
Stephen, thank you. Mourners turning out in droves to pay final respects to former Pope Benedict XVI. You're taking a live look right now at Vatican City. Benedict died Saturday at the age of 95, nearly 10 years after he shocked the world by announcing his retirement. ABC's Mike Marza has more from the Vatican. The river of mourners swelling to 65,000 long, flowing through the Vatican, passing by the former Pope's body. He was a wonderful man and um, appreciated his pontificate. For the second day, the remains of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI is lying in state inside St. Peter's Basilica, the faithful flocking here from around the world. It's really quite astonishing, I would say, because it's you get that feeling of mourning. We caught up with Timothy Cardinal Dolan, who visited the Basilica of St. Mary Major, saying a private prayer for the former pontiff. What strikes you as you begin you know, to think back? Well, you know what strikes me is, first of all, for me, coming to Rome is, uh, is like coming home, because I spent 11 happy years of my life here. So it's always kind of coming home. When you think of home, you think of family. And for us, there's been a death in the family. Pope Emeritus uh, of Benedict. So he was our Holy Father. The Archbishop of New York paying his respects at St. Peter's today. You see, there's already people coming in from all over the world. There's a, there's a, there's always a reminder of, of the universality of the church. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI appointed Dolan to be Archbishop of New York in 2009. Four years later, he became the first pope in 600 years to retire, citing health issues. He died Sunday at 95 years old. An estimated 60,000 people are expected to come right here to St. Peter's Square for Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI's funeral on Thursday. Some 1,000 police officers are also expected to be deployed. As preparations continue, we're learning new details about his funeral. He asked for a simple funeral and will be buried in the crypt of the grotto under the basilica. But I think that simplicity, that solitude, the interior life, his study, his prayer, his humility, I think that'll endure. 12 hours of visitation continues today and tomorrow ahead of the service, which is set for 3.30 Eastern time on Thursday. Mike Marza, ABC News, Rome. In North Texas, a 62-year-old man is accused of stabbing his 8-year-old grandson to death. Officials say the boy and his parents have been living with his grand, the grand, grandfather. The eight-year-old was found dead inside a home Sunday morning. Richland Hills police are calling it a senseless tragedy. Officers found Philip Hughes about a block away in front of Richland Middle School and took him into custody. So far, police have not released a possible motive for the crime. Hughes was given a $2 million bond at his arraignment yesterday. And that happened yes, uh, Monday morning. The Buffalo Bills say DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest, causing him to collapse during the NFL's Monday night football game last night. Now, fans of the team gathered for a prayer circle outside of University Hospital in Cincinnati, where the Bills safety is receiving treatment. The team tweeted earlier this morning that Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest on the field. An ambulance arrived there, and the Bills say medical crews were able to restore his heartbeat. They reported at last check that Hamlin was sedated and listed in critical condition. The NFL announced that the game has been postponed in a statement saying in part, quote, our thoughts are with DeMar and the Buffalo Bills. We will provide more information as it becomes available. In when the 118th Congress is officially sworn in this week, it'll have more women than ever before. 149 are set to serve in the U.S. House and Senate. Two more members than the previous record in the just departed 117th Congress. The new mark was set in November when Alaska elected Democrat Mary Pol Poltola to serve the state's at-large House seat for a full term. Peltola had won a special election earlier this year. Alaska also sends Lisa Murkowski back to the Senate. In the House alone, 124 female members will serve, which is a new high mark. Time now, 539 and 65 degrees for now. A new year means new things for the Tower Life Building here in San Antonio. One of the icons will show you what's changing and what's staying the same. And looking out there with live cam, a nice cold morning. Enjoy that breeze, but you might want a light jacket if you're going to be outside for a while. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 542, a change to an icon of the San Antonio skyline, the Tower Life Building. That transformation will happen with the help of Bear County and its partners, Alamo Capital Advisors and developer Ed Cross and the McCombs family. Jesse Degollado says the new year will be a busy one ahead of the work starting in 2024. It's been the signature of our skyline for as long as I can remember. 
The Tower Life Building will continue to be, since it's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's under the watchful eyes of the National Park Service and the Texas Historical Commission. The exterior facade is historic and we are going to protect it. The interior will become a mixed-use residential building. Real estate investor and developer John Wiegand says a restaurant will overlook the Riverwalk on the ground floor of what used to be a six-story Sears and Roebuck. We don't have department stores like that anymore. While vacant floors like this one will have 234 apartments, those on the upper level will have a view of the city. Weekend says half will be renting below market rate. We think an important part of community is a blend of careers and backgrounds and ages. Where once the renowned architect Atlee B. Ayers officed in the building he designed, so did a future president, General Dwight D. Eisenhower. His headquarters were in this building. And criminal defense attorney Jerry Goldstein has been here since he graduated from law school. So I've been doing this for 55 years. And this is the only office I've ever known. Every landmark has a story. The Tower Life Building is no different. We have an amazing repository of history in this building. This isn't just a doorknob. What I'm holding is literally a piece of history. A doorknob of solid brass with its original insignia as the Smith Young Tower. An example of the Tower Life Building's architectural detail and beauty undertaken by Weekend and his partners. You don't feel like the owner. You feel like the steward for the next generation. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. 543, 65 degrees. Coming up next, how San Antonio teen is following her passion to open up a barbacoa business here in town. Checking Transcad right now. If you're coming into town on I-10, our big problem is on I-10 near Bernie at mile marker 537, if I recall Stephen's note earlier. We'll talk to him coming up. Welcome back into Tuesday morning. A San Antonio teenager is following her dreams after opening a restaurant with her sister and parents. Sarah Hernandez was just 15 years old when she opened her store on the northwest side. And now at 19, she is the CEO of Sarah's Barbacoa and her sister Rebecca is the chief financial officer. So Sarah says the food is made with love and that the Barbacoa is an old family recipe. While running her own restaurant at a young age hasn't been easy, she has a message for other teens who want to follow their dreams. To believe in yourself, obviously, like your dreams can go far and even with your family or with your friends or people that you trust, it's, it's, it's possible to make, make your own dreams come true. And in addition to Barbacoa, the restaurant also sells menudo, tamales and tortillas. Right now we're at 547, 65 degrees. Go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos about the big problems on I-10. You know, I haven't said this in a few days. Pack that patience with a cup of coffee, especially if you're heading down there along I-10. Uh, if you're traveling in from I-10 East, we still have that 18-wheeler that rolled over earlier in the morning, and you can see the work is still taking place out there to clear this mess up. We can tell you right now traffic is being diverted right there onto the frontage road, and that's what we're catching from this TransGuide camera. Not a clear shot and obviously a little shaky out there, but we can clearly see the lights. And of course, traffic is already starting to build a little bit more there along I-10 eastbound as you approach mile marker 537. Again, a little bit of red there in the eastbound lanes. Expect to see that probably just expand a little bit more as the morning does pick up because sometimes these messes can take a little while to clear up. So just give yourself some time. Expect some delays. Just plan accordingly. I do want to take a quick drive over here to I-35, the northeast side, because we will see some lane closures on I-35 southbound, and that is because we have illumination work taking place today, or tonight, I should say, and I love that word, illumination. Tuesday, January 3rd, up until Senator, Saturday, January 7th, this will be overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, multiple right lane closures on I-35 southbound. That's between Top Orion Road and Judson Road. So as I mentioned, you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There's a full list of closures on that page, but not just that. Any notifications that we need to send out will be tweeted out are also embedded on that page if on the far right of the screen. So issues like that will keep you updated on as well. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Very good. And for the kiddos who are going back today, maybe a light jacket this morning. Yeah, not a big one. I mean, especially in the hill country, though, I've got temperatures down in the 40s right now. We're in the 60s here, so we'll uh, end up in the upper 50s. So yeah, light jacket's a pretty good idea, and then you won't need it by the afternoon. We've got some clouds hanging around here right now, but later on today, the moon rise is going to be spectacular. Here's a great shot of it. It is the waxing moon. It was at sunset, and 
She's going to be full soon. Yes, indeed, this Friday, which also happens to be the 12th day of Christmas. Aha! Uh -huh. The sixth on the, uh, the Epiphany. So That's when, you when some folks take down their decorations yes. finally. And I have gotten into that habit recently. Yeah. It's not being procrastinating. It's just <laughs> extend Christmas as long as possible. Uh, but absolutely. Yeah, so the full moon uh, on Friday, and like we're going to have beautiful sunsets, moon rises, and uh, yeah, just fantastic out there with the cl clearer skies later on today because we've got some clouds still hanging around here right now. You can't see them too well in this picture. As I was talking about, much colder in the Hill Country, 47 at Kerrville, 52 Comfort, 62 Helotus. We're still at 66 here in town. I was banking on us dropping into the upper 50s when it's all said and done here in town. A little bit of a breeze out there. Uh, so yeah, light jackets, not a bad idea. Bone dry air moved in behind this uh, front that moved through in the overnight hours, but we still have a slight bit of a breeze. And again, that cloud cover, so that's helping to hold these temperatures up. And look at this, compared to this time yesterday, the dew point has dropped down 38 degrees compared to this time yesterday. Same thing, Rock Springs 37 at Uvalde. A whole different story because we had all that humidity hanging around here. So like I said, I'm going for 57 for a low. It's all said and done here in town, obviously cooler in the hill country. Then a nice big warm up. Dry air warms up very easily and will start to clear out as far as the cloud cover is concerned as we go into the late morning hours. So we'll be up to 69 at noon, then top off at 75 later on today. And yeah, just a spectacular kind of roll down the window sort of a day. So notice how things are a little bit unbalanced here. As far as temperatures, 60 in St. Louis, but at the same latitude, 36 in Wichita and then 19 in Denver. But we're really not getting a nice big chunk of that colder air. This is pretty much just a, a Pacific front that moved through. So it's drier air that slid on in here. That's allowing temperatures in the morning hours once we get rid of the cloud cover to, to drop down. But we're still not going to be down to normal readings once we get into the next couple of days. So we've got this low here, and there's the big chunk of cold air, and there's the uh, warmer air and the divide line, the jet stream, if you will. And yeah, we're kind of flirting with that, that cooler air over the next couple of mornings. We will have low temperatures in the, the mid 40s. Like I said, not quite down to where we should be. So that'll be through tomorrow and Thursday. Then we get this little bit of a bump here, and that's going to be the warming trend and the more humidity coming back in here Friday and Saturday. Then we'll have another little front moving on through and this little bit of a trough coming in here and that's going to be on Sunday and that's going to give us a chance for some rain on Sunday and then cooler temperatures. But with cloud cover, we'll still not be quite down to normal. So I guess what I'm, I'm getting at is we've got sort of a, a, a tranquil as far as temperatures are concerned weather pattern for roughly the next week. Nothing like what we had going into uh, Christmas. Christmas weekend, so don't have to worry about that anytime soon. 69 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon today, and then 75 for high temperature. 10 to 15 degrees above normal, normal high being 63. And then we get into the next few days. And yes, we will be on the warm side, almost 10 degrees above normal for high temperatures, but really pleasant with that lower humidity. And again, the humidity comes back in here Friday, Saturday. Plenty of clouds Saturday, front moves through, chance of rain Sunday. Only 59 on Sunday, so that's kind of the the oddball temperature there because mm -hmm. everything else is a little bit on the, the warm side of things mm -hmm. compared to normal. Yeah, but it's still nice to get outside this time. Yeah, yeah, beautiful to be outside the next few days. Thank you, Mike. 553, 64 degrees. Look at your winning lot of numbers. We have pick three, 389, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 8141, Fireball 7. Cash 5 numbers 7, 18, 19, 29, 33. Texas 2 step, 1, 3, 10, 11, with a bonus ball of 4. And your Powerball numbers, that jackpot's $291 million, 7, 9, 12. 3162 Powerball 22 Power Play 2 and Mega tonight is 785 million dollars. Good morning. Coming up here on a Tuesday edition of GMA, the latest on that breaking news with Buffalo Bills player Damar Hamlin, who collapsed during the Monday night football game after suffering cardiac arrest. What we know about his condition this morning. And the latest on the Idaho student murders. The suspect due in court today and the father of murder victim Kaylee Gonsalves is only on GMA this morning with his reaction to the latest developments in the case. You'll see these stories and so much more right here on GMA.
In case you missed it, you can meet San Antonio's first baby of the new year. Avery Rose Jacks was born just two seconds into the new year at North Central Baptist Hospital. You can check out all the beautiful baby pictures right now at ksat.com. We'll head the next hour of GMSA. The FDA is set to make a ruling on an experimental Alzheimer's drug. We'll check out the timeline for approval and any possible safety concerns. Plus, fallout continues after that scary injury since an NFL player to the hospital in critical condition. We'll have an update on him and reaction from the league after postponing that game indefinitely. And next up, the Congress opens today on Capitol Hill. New Congress will take a look at the high stakes battles expected to play out in just a few hours on the Hill. And back here at home on Transkite, if you're coming into San Antonio on I-10, you are going to expect slowdowns due to an overturned big rig. We've been tracking this now since we went on the air at 430, and we will continue to do so coming up at the top of the hour.